Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. Today I'm going to be testing six different LHR card models using the latest TRX Miner in Hive OS. And I'll also be showing the similar commands you'd be using to do this in Windows. So if you haven't already subscribed, smash down on that subscribe button. Stick with me and let's get started. For my demonstration today, I'm going to be using a dedicated test rig of all six LHR cards. Let me show you what my rig looks like. Here's my dedicated test rig. I have a MSI Gaming X Trio 3060 V2, Zotec 3060 Ti, EVGA 3070 LHR, Bounders Edition 3070 Ti, EVGA 3080 LHR, and an EVGA Arts TX 3080 Ti for the win card. These cards are situated on a rig that has exceptional ventilation and it's running on an HROC H110 Pro BTC motherboard, and it's powered by server power supply, 1200 watts, as well as an EVGA 1300 watt G2 power supply. So I have plenty of power for this rig to test. When using the T-Rex Miner with LHR cards, it's really key to have great overclock settings, but it's also very important to have your auto-tune, your LHR unlock logic configured properly. And to do this in Hive OS, it's pretty easy. I'm going to be using a flight sheet that's specific just for my LHR rig, and I'm just going to go into the Setup Miner config options. And within here, a dialog appears in the T-Rex Miner configuration. If you notice down below, I have extra config arguments. This is where I would normally specify my initial values for my LHR tuning, my auto-tune step size, as well as my LHR auto-tune interval. Let me talk about these briefly. So the LHR tune in the current version of T-Rex is gonna start out at a default value of 74 when you're just mining Ethereum. With that value, it may, over time, it will increase or decrease depending upon where it's stable. Let's say if it gets up to 75 or maybe even 75.5, that would have actually taken it normally an hour. So normally T-Rex will reassess if it can make an order to an adjustment every 20 minutes. That's the default interval. So after 20 minutes, it'll go from 74 to 74.5. 74.5 maybe to 75 etc so it takes 20 minutes each time and now if you stop and restart that miner it becomes dumb again so it's going to start it back at 74 but if i have a car that's already getting 75 or maybe 75.5 coming in here and specifying that value as a default value is saying hey let's go we're not going to start at the beginning buddy we're going to go right to the front of the line we know exactly what our LHR tune setting is, and we're going to specify that right at the beginning. So we're able to get better mining performance out of our cards. And if you have multiple cards, you just comma separate these values. So I have LHR tune colon, then you see 74, 75.0. That's my first card, 75.0 second card, etc. And then some of the later cards, like my 3080 Ti is going to be 74.0. The next primer I'm going to be looking at is the LHR auto tune step size. By default, T-Rex will move in adjustments of 0.5 for the LHR setting. So it'll go 74 to 74.5. If it fails, it'll go from 74. If it hits an LHR lock, it'll go to 73.5. So in that case, I want to maybe dial in on those numbers a little bit tighter. If maybe I can get 74.3 out of it. But if I just leave that 0.5 default interval, I'll never find that. So by me putting a 0.1, it lets me move a much more granular step. So I'll go 74, 74.1, 74.2, etc. And the same way too, if it fails, it'll fail back in much smaller intervals as well. The last parameter I'm going to talk about is the LHR auto-tune interval. By default, this is 20 minutes, as I said earlier. So it'll wait 20 minutes if it's running before it tries to increase and see if it can get a higher LHR value for the tuning. By me specifying a value of five, it's saying, hey, after five minutes, if you're running great and secure and stable, then try to go to the next interval. And this lets me dial in that number quicker than I could otherwise. Now, let's take a look at how you would do this in Windows. So we have these same parameters available to us. So here's a sample batch file. This is actually from a different mining rig that has a mix of full hash as well as LHR cards. So this is just the standard Windows batch file, T-Rex Miner, Algo, Stratum Wallet, and it's three devices. But now notice I have the dash dash LHR tune value here, and the beginning values are zeros. And that's because this is a mixed rig that I'm showing you in Windows. It's gonna have full hash as well as LHR cards. So for the full hash cards, I specify a LHR tune value of zero. So it's not even gonna to try to apply any of the LHR logic as well as after my overclock settings, I have the dash dash LHR auto tune step size. 
is going to be 0.1 like we showed it in the Hive OS earlier. And I can specify too what is my auto tune interval. So this is rig has been running for a long time. I don't need to keep trying every 10, every five minutes or every small amount. So I have to set it 10. So find a value that works for you. And I find by using the correct overclock settings paired up with this LHR configuration, it lets me get much better hash rates as well as they're much more repeatable. And if I have to especially stop and restart the miner, I don't have to wait for everything to recalibrate and re-ramp up. I'm kind of starting off exactly where I want to be, getting the highest hash rate from the moment I start the miner. For my demonstration today, I'm going to be testing all six of my LHR card models, everything from an RTX 3060 V2 all the way up through to an RTX 3080 Ti and all the primary LHR card models in between. And so you're familiar with our screen layout, I'm going to be showing the Hive OS, the overclock settings that are passed directly in Hive, everything ranging from the locked core clock, the memory clock offset, as well as the fan speed. And the fan speed is subjective. So depending upon your climate, as well as your cooling and ventilation, you may want to adjust that. I generally keep my cards running between 60 to 75% on the fan. But again, that depends on what climate and how warm it is, as well as how good is the ventilation around it. The other thing you want to consider is the memory clock. So the memory clock offset is normally boosted to get higher efficiency out of our cards. However, Hive does not show us the thermal temperatures for the memory oil. So oftentimes I'll take cards and I'll maybe put them in a Windows rig just to see how well at these overclocks it's performing. So you may want to do that as an extra check so you can avoid thermal throttling and keep your cards running great. Another point I want to mention too is that for this test in Hive OS, I was using driver 470.86 and that's what was giving me really great results. If you have any suggestions of some newer drivers or drivers giving you even higher or better performance, I'd love to know it. So please drop a comment down below. For our Windows users, we're going to be displaying a complete command line up top. And in that command line up top is the statement to run the T-Rex miner, set the stratum as well as the wallet and pass in the overclock statements. So I think now that you have a big picture of how my screen is going to be laid out for this, let's get into our testing. The first card I'm testing is my RTX 3060 V2 card. This is the MSI Gaming X Trio with really thick radiators and great cooling so I don't have to run the fans very hard. In Hive OS using a locked core clock of 1575 and a memory clock offset of plus 2600, I was getting great results of 37.02 mega hash at a 340 efficiency. My next card I tested is a RTX 3060 Ti. This is the white Zotac card with Hynix memory, which limits me on how high I can overclock that memory. I'm trying to get one with Samsung memory, but no luck yet so far. But with this card, I'm still getting really great results using a locked core clock of 1380 in HiveOS and a memory clock of 2050. I was able to reach 45.1 mega hash at a 342 efficiency. The next card I'm going to be testing is my RTX 3070. This is the EVGA card. And this 3070 has fantastic efficiency using a lock core clock of 1065 and a memory clock offset of plus 2700 in Hive OS. I was able to get great results with this card of 47.1 mega hash on average with a 0.436 efficiency. The next card I'm testing is a RTX 3070 Ti. This is the Founders Edition card. It's a real workhorse and it's a great value card for the money. And using this card at a 975 locked core clock and a plus 2700 memory clock offset in Hive OS, I got fantastic results of 60.6 mega hash consistently with a 0 0.340 is my efficiency. The next card I tested is a RTX 3080 and this is the EVGA card and it's got really great cooling and radiators and I've gotten great results with it on my Windows testing but I could see even in Hive it's running great using a locked core clock of 1410 and a memory clock offset of plus 2800 in Hive I was able to get fantastic results of 76.2 mega hash with a 0.323 efficiency overall. The last card I'm testing is my RTX 3080 Ti. This is the EVGA for the win card and it's gotten me some amazing spectacular results in the past on some of my Windows testings. But even in Hive I'm getting great results using a locked core clock of 1410 and a memory clock offset of plus 2800 in Hive. I was getting 91.5 mega hash on average with a 0.355 efficiency overall. I'm really happy to share these overclock settings with you and my final mining results 
R from my 3060 V2, I got 37 mega hash. From my 3060 Ti, I got 45.1 mega hash. My 3070 LHR is 47.1 mega hash with a 0.436 efficiency, which is fantastic. 3070 Ti is giving me 60.6 mega hash. 3080 LHR gave me 76.2 mega hash. And rounding it all out, my RTX 3080 Ti is giving me 91.5 mega hash, which is fantastic results overall, in my opinion. How does it stack up against the previous versions of the T-Rex miner? Is it worth upgrading if you're just going to be mining Ethereum? Well, let's take a look. So in a previous test I have done using the T-Rex miner, 24.8 is shown on the right, as well as 25.8 is shown on the left. You see the results are almost identical, less well under 1% difference I'm getting in this. And this seems to be because the LHR unlock ability that the miners have now, they seem to reach their limit. They've kind of plateaued. We're seeing this with the T-Rex miner. We've seen with this with LOL miner and G miner. No one's really unlocking anymore. And it's been about at least three months, I would guess, since we've even seen an update from NB Miner. So if you're considering, you know, should I upgrade to the 25.8 version? Well, there's some new features in it that go beyond just the Ethereum mining. See, the way the miners now are looking at how they're able to get higher profitability out of the graphic cards is to do dual mining. If I can't get any more Ethereum out of my cards, if they kind of squeezed it already for everything they have, now the next only option that they guess they have is to look at dual mining. And that's where T-Rex really, really excels. With the latest version 25.8, I'm able to mine using these same exact overclocks I'm using for Ethereum. They work great to do dual mining of Ethereum and Alephium at the same time and not really sacrifice much of the Ethereum. However, the one thing to keep in mind though too, if you're gonna be doing dual coin mining on your rigs is you're gonna be using the core more, hence you will be using more power. So it's really important to have an idea of your power consumption. Make sure you have adequate power supplies as well as electricity to power them. When I look at my LHR rig, here's my six LHR cars that we just reviewed and my power consumption at the meter is showing me 1220 down to 1190. So about 1200 watts is what we're seeing at the wall. I hope these overclock settings help you and give you guidance on how you can get even higher hash rates and higher mining profitability on your LHR cards in Hive OS as well as Windows. We have a lot more Hive coverage planned. So if you've enjoyed this video and you wanna see more Hive coverage, definitely give me a big thumbs up, like, smash down on that subscribe button to show you support for our channel. It really means a lot to us. We welcome all your questions and comments. Please put them down below. Till next time, stay safe, happy mining.